Hey everyone, Brian Beeler coming to you from the Storage View Lab. And today we're taking a look at something that we've been working with for a long time and we've actually teased in, in prior videos and prior content. This is the Cheetah Raid Prowler. It's an industrial edge IoT server storage device that has a lot of flexibility and a lot of capabilities. And we're going to get into all of those uh, in this video today. But first off, just take a look at the size of this unit. It's really teeny. It's made to go in uh, military use cases, autonomous vehicles. Uh, we could see this at uh, M&E use cases at the edge, anywhere where you need a system that's a little bit tougher than your standard, but you don't want to compromise on ingest, on uh, a little enough processing power to, to handle the storage and uh, the ability to, to get data out of the system once you're done collecting it. So what we did is we took this system, we partnered with Radix, which is a, uh, a software company that can handle the NVMe drives and provide the software RAID that we need for this system. We partnered with, it was Intel when we started and uh, Solidime by the time we finished. So that's the new uh, Intel NAND storage group that was acquired by SK Hynix. It's got a new name. Uh, so I will certainly trip up and call these Intel drives, but it's the uh, uh, Solidine now uh, uh, P5316, the 30 terabyte QLC drives. Uh, we cheat a rate, of course, on, on the system, and the three of those guys come together into this solution. I should mention at the top of this uh, video too that Intel did sponsor this piece. They're the ones that help put this together and, uh, and bring these companies uh, and the products all together, get them into our lab for the testing. So take that for what you will. We report back on the data that we capture though and everything that we did was here in our lab in, in Cincinnati with this product. All that out of the way, let's look at the system itself because this is what's really interesting to me and I think to you guys as well. Now it is a very diminutive system. If I were to stagger these 5316s out a little further, you would see it's only three SSDs wide, uh, which with no banana for scale, we'll have to rely on the SSD for scale. Uh, in the front, we've got a couple lights and buttons and fans uh, for the system here, but that's all secondary to the drive caddy. Now this caddy is really, from a technology standpoint, really, really interesting. So it'll hold four of these drives. Now we're going to put, uh, or we did put four of these 30 terabyte drives in this cartridge. And with this system in an autonomous vehicle, collecting all this telemetry data as it's driving around, all of that's going into this, going into this cartridge. And then the cartridge can be ejected and put into an ingest system. So what we see is that there's a little button on the front here and depressing that button, what it can do, if this is what you want it to do, is unmount the RAID group and detach it so that this caddy can be removed without having to shut down the system. It's pretty sweet. These little thumb screws can be undone. And this little handle, and then we eject the caddy. And if you can see here on the back, there's a connector here to get all of those drives into the system. And like I said, the data flow for this uh, autonomous vehicle workflow is that this is in the car, it's collecting all the sensor data. Radix has got these drives organized and is managing the rights to the drive. This is really important. Because these are QLC drives, we've got to be really careful how we write to them. And because the way these drives are put together, they really want to be written to in large block, uh, you know, preferably sequential. And that's what this system does, is it takes all of this varied sensor data that's coming in, more or less coalesces the writes and then shoots them off to these QLC drives. Typically, we would say never use QLC drive in a high write intensity environment, but the way this is put together, and we'll look at the data here in just a minute, it's really okay and actually works out supremely well. Uh, the data that we looked at was 512 uh, byte sequential reads and writes. Uh, some of the workloads will scale up to a megabyte, some get even larger in, in block sizes than that. It really depends on the workload, but for this autonomous vehicle use case that we focused in on uh, for this paper, that's where we went. Anyway, so the data comes in, this is in the trunk or you know, back row of a, of a vehicle or in a truck cab, data is getting collected, goes to this. This cartridge then gets popped out and can be chunked into an ingest server. An ingest server looks kind of like this guy. It's about twice as wide and has several of these banks across it. And the same sort of button uh, mechanism released to unmount the RAID. But you chunk this guy in, 
start ingesting the data. And now your data scientists, your AI ML guys, can get this data fresh from the uh, autonomous vehicle system, process that data, run their algorithms, make changes, and on the fly, get this system back out for another run. Now with these drives, what they're really doing a lot of is taking these 30 terabyte Intel parts, running them in RAID 5 or RAID 0 to sort of line up with however much uh, capacity they need with the, uh, the, the drive time. It seems like right now with this workload, with autonomous vehicles specifically, that about eight hours of drive time equates to 60 terabytes of, of capacity. So eight hour cycles get to be, uh, get to be pretty intensive in their data creation. Um, so that what we'll see is customers will use sometimes the 15 terabyte P5316 in RAID zero to get them to that 60 terabyte roughly number for eight hours of, of uh, autonomous vehicle data collection, or go to the 30 terabyte and go RAID 5, have a little more resiliency, uh, but end up in a similar capacity place. A um, lot of flexibility, a lot of options, especially with these high capacity SSDs. And of course we need SSDs here. There are a lot of size constraints, power constraints in a vehicle. So flash is definitely the mechanism. So anyway, this little caddy here is really the, the uh, important part that helps facilitate this little system's ability to capture the data and then to maintain the data flow and get it into an ingest system and out to the data scientists for additional processing. All right, so I've spun the device around and now when we see the Prowler on the back, there's really some interesting things that are worth pointing out. Now, in this case, we're using an external power supply, uh, which in our lab is, is the way we need to do it. Uh, it does let the server itself be a little bit smaller, but there's another important thing to consider in that this could be powered by 12 volt DC. So depending on the use cases, uh, the, the power connection that goes into this device is important, but also really flexible. One other thing too, is that if we look at the connector on this guy, once it's, once it's inserted in here, it, it's locked in. And to get access to remove this, you've got to unscrew uh, this little screw guy and flip a little panel guy around and, and get access to it. So when we think about rugged IoT devices, they're gonna be bumped and jostled and moved around and, and sometimes that extra little layer of security to make sure that your physical connections don't get severed, especially with something that's collecting data the whole time is really pretty important. The other highlights around the back of the system, the NVIDIA Connect X5 card, that's the uh, dual 100 gig that lets us get the data off of the system. We'll show you some uh, NVMe over fabric data uh, on that as well, which is really important. There's two 10G on board, a management port, some USB and, and other type stuff. And when we look at the inside of this system, we'll show you some of these photos that we took when uh, disassembling it. It's built really well, and to get inside this thing, it's a number of screws, well, about two dozen, to take apart the support structure to get access to all of the things inside. Inside, you'll find an AMD processor. You can do this with Ryzen or Epic uh, parts, depending on what you want, but they all support Gen 4, which is important for the SSDs. Our configuration has 128 gig of RAM. We do have a little adapt deck controller to get the, the NVMe devices together, and that gives Radix the, uh, the ability to layer their software on top and handle the RAID and the NVMe over fabric bit. So in terms of performance, like I said, we looked at um, 512 sequential transfer speeds. Uh, that's consistent with how this platform would be used in the field in this autonomous vehicle use case. So if we just look at the internal performance of the system in RAID 5, we saw reads at 14.2 gigabytes per second. In RAID 0, 14.7 gigabytes per second, so pretty much parity there. On the right side, the RAID 5 gave us 8.6 gigabytes per second, and the RAID 0 gave us 12.8 gigabytes per second. The, the decision to go to RAID 0 is important because some of the Cheetah RAID customers prefer the capacity and the performance that RAID 0 offers. And while they give up the resiliency to them, it's okay to have to rerun that route with an autonomous vehicle if they need to. The 100 gig links on the back are perfect for NVMe over fabric. In this case, we saw RAID 5 uh, NVMe over fabric read performance of 13.7 gigabytes per second. And on the RAID 0, about the same at, at 14. Uh, the RAID 5 does take a bit of a hit on, uh, on writes at 4.6 gigabytes per second 
with the rate zero writing at, at 13.1. Now the NVMe over fabric write performance is a little bit less critical here because we're pretty much going to read that data, uh, wipe the drives, throw them back in here and be off and, and ingesting again in a uh, perpetual uh, motion of, of getting these AV uh, cars back out there and collecting data as much as possible. Now I mentioned the Radix component earlier, and that's important not just from a uh, software RAID perspective, but also from a system management perspective. Radix software lets you uh, have visibility into the storage, provision the storage, set up your shares, all through a GUI, which is kind of handy if you don't want to use Linux commands. It's fundamental to this system by being able to tie together the SSDs, the RAID groups, and, and the, the provisioning and, and management of that. So then when we think about the system in, in its entirety, the Cheetah RAID Prowler hardware, the Radix software, and the Solidime P5316 QLC SSDs, the combination is really specifically tuned for the autonomous vehicle use case that we're looking at, military, joint tactical AV use cases, uh, submarines, aircraft, there's all sorts of things there. For media and entertainment, data collection at the edge, so think of uh, filming on, on set, getting that data off cameras and onto something like this for RAID protected storage, and then to be able to easily eject these and ingest them into something else to get that footage off to uh, other people in the workflow to be able to handle it. In all, this is a really nicely designed system and we know that they're working on others for, for specific industrial edge use cases and can't wait to see what else uh, happens here. But this was a really exciting project for us. We had a lot of fun with it. And bottom line, seeing QLC drives used in a write intensive environment is really, really neat and not something we expected to see, uh, certainly not this year. And uh, the guys at, at Radix have done a really good job on the software to manage these drives and get the most out of them. So that's the Cheetah Raid Prowler. We appreciate you tuning in and look forward to bringing you more video content in the near future.